Hi, my name is Rüdiger Gartmann, and I would like to show you how Security Manager allows you to share your data smarter, easier, and more secure. But what does it mean? Well, in a nutshell, Security Manager extends ArcGIS, giving you the ability to filter data provided to your users. This can help you achieve two main goals. First of all, you can ensure that specific content is only available to those who require it. That means sensitive data is still protected while allowing you to make it available to those who need it most. Secondly, Security Manager can help you reduce efforts and resources required to serve different content to various user groups. So instead of publishing services redundantly, so one service for each of those user groups providing exactly the content this user group shall get access to, Security Manager can help you just provide a single service and just filter access for your different user groups. So you only have one service in place instead of lots of redundant services. So let's have a look at an actual example. Let's assume we have a data set provided by a national agency in the United States providing data to power network information. This data set consists of three different layers one layer providing power plant information, another layer providing electric substations, and a third layer providing power lines. And let's assume we have a couple of users who all don't need access to the full data set, but only to parts of it. So let's have a look at Bradley first. Bradley is responsible for the Californian power generation. Therefore, he needs access to all power plants and substations, but only in the area of California. So when Bradley logs into the system and he gets access to the actual same service, but filtered by security manager. So first of all, Bradley only gets access to two layers instead of three, because Bradley only needs access to power plants and electric substations. Still, Bradley can work in the same way with that service, uh, just on the uh, reduced content. So Bradley would not even assume that there is additional data filtered out of the content that he just can't see. So it appears as a regular service to him. When we look at a different example, let's have a look at Frederick. Frederick is monitoring wind power infrastructure in the United States. Therefore, he also needs access to power plants but only to wind power plants. But he needs access for the whole United States. And he is not using the service directly, he's using it in an operations dashboard. So let's see what happens when Frederick logs in. So the dashboard appears with all the relevant information to him. So we have lots of statistics and we also have a map. And most of this data is uh, using the same data set we have seen before. But for Frederick, it is restricted to wind power plants only. So we can see how many power plants are idle in that area. We can see the status of the wind. We can see uh, how much uh, wind power is uh, created. And we can access uh, the wind power plants here in the map. But all other power plants are not shown here because they are not re re required by Frederick. As another example, let's have a look at Edward. Edward is a maintenance worker and he's working on high power lines. That means he only needs access to power lines with a voltage of above 400 kilovolts because these are the lines he's working on. His company is not active in the whole United States. Uh, they are only working in the southwestern area. And uh, as well as uh, apps uh, on the desktop, they are also using the collector app in the field. So let's see what happens when Edward accesses the data. So first of all, he has an app where he can uh, review the different power lines in his area of interest. And we only see power lines which, which have more than 400 kilovolts. And so he can pick a power line and change the status from in service to down for maintenance.
So now the status of that power line is changed for all users accessing this data set. Now Edward can go out in the field and do his maintenance task. And once he's finished with that, uh, he can access his collector app and can change the status back. And also when using collector in an offline mode, he still has access to the same information and to the same filters. So he can change the status back to in service, make sure that everybody is aware. And as soon as the device connects, uh, the status is updated for all users. And as a final example, let's have a look at Gloria. Gloria works for a power company called Imaginary Power. This power company runs their own power plants and power lines. And Gloria needs access to all assets which are run by her company. And therefore, Security Manager again filters the content to Gloria. That means also Gloria accesses the same data set as we have seen throughout all these different use cases. But here, Security Manager makes sure that only power lines and power plants are shown where the owner or the operator equals imaginary power. So again, we have the same data set, but again, the user only sees parts of the information because Security Manager applies the filtering. And now imagine that we have more than a thousand power companies in the United States. And let's imagine how such a use case could be achieved without Security Manager. Probably impossible. So after having seen these different scenarios, Please remember that all those users we have seen are using the same service. This is not important to them, but it's very important to the data provider who can save lots of efforts and lots of time by just maintaining a single data set and a single service and let Security Manager do the live filtering of the content according to all the different user groups. So with this, I would like to close my presentation and thank you for your attention. If you have further questions or further interest in Security Manager, get in touch with us. Thank you and bye-bye.